Hey, and welcome to the Joey Miller Podcast. I have a question for you today, and that is, what is your self-worth? How do you think that you are right now as is? Are you enough? Are you always trying to gain affirmation from other people in other areas of your life? Well, if that's you, we're going to take a look at self-worth today. We're going to jump into the Bible, to the Word of God, and we're going to start back in Genesis chapter 3. And I want to take a look at Adam and Eve here in this scripture because there is an element uh, where they are hiding from God, that they're ashamed, that they're afraid, and they're hiding from God. And I was meditating on this scripture and on this thought, and I was thinking how that is in our lives, that oftentimes we are ashamed or, or we feel bad about ourselves. We let the shame of maybe something that's happened to us or something that we've done in our past to get on us in a sense where before we know it, we're also hiding from God. And you know, self-worth is is just understanding that you are you are worthy of love just as you are, that you are enough. But our instinct, our inclination is to take on all these other uh, images of ourselves to a point where we're not even being the truest version of who we are before God, our creator. And so I want to take a look at Genesis chapter 3 because your self-worth is connected to so many other things in your life. And I'm not talking about self-confidence. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, self-confidence is uh, based on external things. It's, it's um, you know, I'm really confident because I'm a good speaker. Or I'm really confident because I'm a good singer. Or I'm really confident because, um, you know, I'm a good writer. Or I get my affirmation from the world. They're telling me I'm good at all these things. That And it makes me confident. Self-worth is an inside uh, work that, that we have to really understand of who we are, not on our best day because of our own righteousness, but because of our God in the image of which we were created. And so we can't truly receive love from other people or from God if we don't think that we're worthy of that love. If there's versions of ourselves that we're still trying to hide because of shame or because of labels that we've had put on our life. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. We see here the serpent was more crafty than any other beast and we see he goes to the woman and he tricks her into eating the apple, which wasn't really an apple, FYI, it was probably a fig. They didn't have apple trees in the garden. Um, they think it was a fig. And she ate it and all of a sudden she she had this knowledge that she shouldn't have had before and she gives it to her husband. He eats it. And I love what it says here. Uh, it says in verse in verse 6, it says, She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Another version says their eyes were open and they were ashamed. They were naked and ashamed. That this awareness came into them now that for some reason that they, they had to hide. They had to to be something that they weren't. And I love because it goes on and God's having a conversation with them. But the Lord, in, in verse 9, says, But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Now they had been walking in perfect fellowship up to this point. There was no hiding. They were walking together in perfect a unity. And he said, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And God goes on to say, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And so we see in this moment, that Adam was trying to hide himself from God. He was trying to hide his sin or his something that made him ashamed. That's what being ashamed is, embarrassed or guilty because of one's actions, characteristics, or association. So Adam was guilty of his actions, and so he hid himself from God. And isn't that like us a lot of times? We think that we can hide ourselves from God, that we can present ourselves uh, as a version to God that we want to show him. There's areas of our life that we feel like we have to get a fig leaf and hide over in order to present ourselves to him. And understanding his love for us is understanding that he loves you as is right now. It's not get your life together get cleaned up, and then you're worthy of my love. The Bible says that our righteousness 
are as filthy rags. Even on our best day, we weren't worthy of uh, his love for us. But by, by, by the grace of God, through faith, by grace, Jesus Christ made a way where there was no way now that he, he takes away all of the shame, all of the, the areas in our life that we want to hide. And, and I want to address this because it's so important in growing in your relationship with God because it's God's love that brings transformation in our lives. It's, it's God's love that, that really causes us to, to grow in, in, in even our purity and our righteousness. It's his love that calls us forward. He calls us into better things. But if we're not honest with ourselves and we continue to present a version of ourselves to God that he sees anyway, then we're not going to be truly convinced that we're worthy of that love. We're going to think, oh, if God saw that area of my life or if God knew this about me, that, then he wouldn't accept me or love me. And, and so I want to talk about this. I love Psalm 139.7. It reminds us that we can't hide from God. Uh, it makes me laugh when even as Christians, we try to hide from God. Maybe we're experiencing something and we don't want to seem like we are out of faith. So, so we'll maybe hide our emotions from God or go to him in prayer and we'll be feeling one thing, but we'll communicate something else. And God sees it all anyway. In fact, you know, God doesn't want us to complain. He wants us to stay in faith. But if you read the book of Psalm, like we see David just going bare hearted before God, like in, in all of his failures and all of his feelings, he takes it all to God. And, and God is able to handle that. God saw David uh, in, in the worst states that, that David was burying himself before God. He wasn't trying to hide himself or to put on some sort of show for God. He was very transparent with God. And, and, and so God doesn't want us to hide ourselves from him. He wants us to lean into him in those moments. A life of faith isn't pretending like we're a different version of ourselves. It's saying, God, this is all of who I am. I take it and I lay it at your altar and I'm bringing it all to you. The good, the bad, the ugly, you know me, you've created me. Uh, Psalm 139 seven says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. That there's not, not one moment that God doesn't see and know about you, yet he loves you anyway. And, and that doesn't mean that he just leaves us in our mess or leaves us in the areas of, of sin or shame. No, it means he's calling us out of that into his love, which transforms us into the image of Jesus. Hey, I want to take a minute and interrupt this podcast to remind you that you can receive encouragement directly to your inbox every other week from me. Go to joeymiller.co, sign up for the newsletter, and every other week you'll get a word of encouragement with links and what's going on at L Ministries. So go there today, joeymiller.co, click on the newsletter, and I will see you in your inbox. And so, you know, it's so important to get this right because if, if we don't get this right, then we're never going to rise above that area of shame or what we feel like um, that we can give God without him rejecting us. Because people never, you never rise to what you feel like is possible, uh, but, you, but you will end up falling to what you feel like you are worthy of. Let me explain that to you for a second. Uh, God has, has called you with a purpose and a plan for your life. And as much as you want to think that you will continue to rise to that plan and that purpose and that potential, if you don't get this right, you will always default to what you feel like you're worthy of. That you will always default to, well, that's a great plan, but if God knew this about me, or if I let other people know this about me, you'll have like a, a lifelong imposter syndrome, even in your relationship with God. And that, that stops the flow of you receiving that love and that grace that he wants to get to you to empower you to the potential that he's actually called you to. And I want to take a second and talk about this this area of to know God and to know ourselves because it, it's so powerful in our relationship with Him and our friendship with Him and and uh, there's something that that is called the double knowledge of God and it's it, it's basically a theory that says this all wisdom is comprised by two parts knowing God and knowing self. To know God in his perfections will lead us to an understanding of our imperfections. 
So there's an element when we know God and we know he is holy and we know of his righteousness and his His uh, perfection, then we have areas in our lives that are imperfect. And it's like that awe moment of, wait a second, my life looks different than this and, and I need to change, I need to grow. And to know our imperfections will then propel us towards a relationship with God. But here's what we do a lot of times. We see God's perfections and then we try to take fig, fig leaves and cover up all of our perf- imperfections and say, okay, God, um, I'm good. I'm like, good. And God is like, no, I already saw you. I already know what you did, what you thought. I already know what happened to you and I love you anyway. And I want to heal you and I want to grow you and I want to change you. But until we take a good hard look in the mirror, we can't change. I remember when I had my kids I was on a weight loss journey and I gained about 100 pounds with each pregnancy. And so the hardest thing to do was to actually, when I I made the decision that I was going to start eating healthy and start uh, trying to get back to my ideal weight after having kids, the hardest thing to do was to get on the scale. Why is that? Because the scale don't lie. Uh, you, know, you, you know, you look at it and you say, okay, this is my starting number. And, and as hard as it is to look at that number, unless you know where you're at, you can't see the progress and the change that you're making along the way. That progress and change is actually what motivates you to keep making good, healthy decisions in your life. And it's like that uh, with us. If we're not willing to take a good look at ourselves, some of us are good at like celebrating God and, and getting to know God. But there's only a certain extent you could do that without taking a good, hard, bare, naked look at yourself and saying, yeah, I'm going to be brave enough to look at myself, to get on the scale without being ashamed, without not letting all these labels and feelings. You know, that was one of the mental things of getting on the scale. It was all of a sudden it was shame and and all of these labels that I was piling on myself. And, and, And you have to be courageous enough to just take a good, hard look in the mirror of who you are right now, where you're at, and say, God, I am not perfect. There's areas in my life. There's maybe attitudes in my heart. There Maybe you're dealing with bitterness or unforgiveness, and, and you try to put just a, a Band-Aid or cover it, and God is like, no, I see it. I see it. But until you can see it and, and bring it before me, I, I can't work in that situation. I can't heal you. I can't help you to be the wholest version of yourself. And so to, to know God is to to know us ourselves and to to allow him to fill in the gap and start to grow us in a relationship with him knowledge of ourselves actually incites us to seek after god and understand who he is and knowing god is is helping us understand a new level of ourselves to be authentic before god is the only way we can truly receive his love in our lives to say you know what i understand that you see me god i understand that you know me god and as you do i'm believing that you love me as is and you're in this process with me and you're changing me and and it it translates to every area of your life if you feel like this with people if people really knew me you know the more you receive god's love the less you have to get affirmation from other people in your life the less you have to prove to them that you're worthy of love you you don't have to prove to people that you're worthy of love you are worthy you are loved by the father and from that flows every other healthy relationship from your life so to ask that question today do you feel like you're enough Have you taken a good, hard look in the mirror and said, I am beautiful as is and I'm committed to grow. I I see you, God, and because I see myself where I'm at and I know I need to grow, but I I am enough right now. I am loved by God, that you are not mad at me, that you are not causing me to hide from you. You're actually inviting me to come closer to you so that I can be changed in the image of, of your love. And so today, you know, ask that question. Are there things that, that you feel like you're ashamed of, that you're afraid of? That if God knew, what are the things that when you go to in prayer, if you feel like you have to hide from God, take a minute today and just maybe write in your journal, lay it all out before him. Have a moment of prayer before him and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that that you considered me worthy enough to send Jesus Christ to die on the cross. If it were just me, you would have done it. Your love for me is so great. I don't have to hide. I don't have to pretend to be somebody else. You know, God can't bless who you're pretending to be. God can't change who you're pretending to be. He can't set free a version of you that doesn't exist. It's not until we get authentic before God that he does his best 
work. Remember, he created you in the first place. He knit you together in your mother's womb. There is nobody who knows you better than God, and there is nobody who loves you more. So uh, just let that marinate with you today. Be changed in the image of his love, and I'll talk to you soon on the Joe Miller Podcast.